Good evening, boys and girls. <clears throat> Coming to you live from my couch, my comfy couch. It's 11 o'clock at night, and I'm not really happy, and I'm going to tell you why. This morning when I was all fresh makeup, fresh hair, looking a little bit cute, with the lighting good at school, I made um, the reading of chapters like 19 through 21. And I just realized tonight that I left off the last page of chapter 21. So that kind of ruined everything I did this morning. So I'm rereading what I did this morning. And I'm just going to finish the book because because I want to finish the book. And my makeup's no longer good. I'm no longer fresh. I've got this cat's here. It's going to be bothering me. But I'll try to be sweet. Okay, I'll try to be sweet because this is a great book. And uh, let's have a good time reading it. So I should be really good at this since I already did it um, over 12 hours ago. Right? Okay. So we're going to start um, on Chapter 19, A Fire at Night, <clears throat> page 92. Let's begin. On a summer evening, Amanda and Jimmy and Meg sat outside their doorway. Amanda was sewing a shirt for Jimmy. Meg was making a hat of green palmetto leaves. Jimmy was rubbing the door knocker with a cloth. Robert Waters and Chris Carter came by. Barefooted with their long black beards, they looked like wild men. They stopped for a look at the lion's head. It was in our chest, said Jimmy, and the salt water made spots on it. Shall I take them off for you? asked Master Carter. I can do it, said Jimmy. The two men went away, but in a little while, Master Waters came back alone. Do you like palmetto berries? Yes, said Jimmy. Do you know the place where the men dug the new well? I saw berries on a tree a little farther on. After Master Waters had gone, Jimmy said, I'm going to get some berries. We'll all go, said Amanda. They walked through the woods. Meg was skipping. Amanda asked her, where did you learn to skip? I don't know, said Meg. It just happened to me. They went as far as the new well and a little farther. They found no palmetto berries, but they found something they had never seen before. It was a big, smooth rock with moss on its sides. Jimmy climbed up on it and jumped off. I want to jump, said Meg. She climbed the rock. She jumped off and fell into the bushes. Amanda went to her. Did you hurt yourself? No, said Meg. She began to pull at her buttons. Meg, said Amanda, what are you doing? I can't jump in all these clothes. Meg was out of her dress. She kicked off her shoes. Barefooted and in her petticoat, she climbed the rock and stood there. Look at me, she shouted. I'm a bird. She jumped with her long hair flying. Amanda looked in wonder. Meg was playing. Here on this island, in the clear, bright air, she had learned to play. Jimmy was shouting, I'm a bird too. He climbed the rock and jumped after her. Again and again they jumped. <clears throat> Come and jump, Amanda, said Jimmy. Oh, no, she said. It was such a long time since she had played. She was sure she had forgotten how. They walked slowly home. The sun was nearly down when they came to their house. Jimmy looked into the sea chest. Where is the knocker? Where did you put it? asked Amanda. Back in the chest. Are you sure? I thought I put it back, he said. He looked in the grass outside the house. Ann Hopkins came down the path. What are you looking for? she asked. My lion's head, he said. Maybe someone took it. Who? he asked. Ann didn't answer. Maybe you took it, he said. She pulled her lips in. Do you think I would ever steal or tell a lie? I mean to go to heaven. 
September passed, and part of October. Every night a fire was lighted on the north tip of the island. It was to guide the ship that would come from Virginia. But when November came, Admiral Summers said, We need not light the fire any longer. I fear the boat never reached Virginia. If it had, a ship would have come by now. Chapter 20 A Quarrel Winter on the island was like no winter Amanda had ever known before. The days were fair. Warm winds in, blew in from the sea. In the North Harbor, men were building a ship. Part of it was made of wood from the wrecked sea adventure. Part of it was made of cedar that had been cut on the island. Almost every evening, Amanda and Jimmy and Meg took a walk down to the North Harbor to see the ship that was being built. It looks like a fish with the bones picked clean, said Jimmy. There was a long wooden keel with wooden ribs fastened to it. It did look like the bones of a fish, thought Amanda. Before the ship was finished, Admiral Summers said, We must build another one. Why? asked the men. This ship will not hold all our people. And the things we want to take, said the Admiral. And there is another reason. If one ship should be lost, the other might still reach Virginia. Some of the men were angry. We have worked hard, they said, and now more work is put on our shoulders? A cloud seemed to fall over the island. Men began to meet in small groups. They talked together, and their voices were low and secret. A quarrel broke out on the North Harbor. Amanda and Jimmy and Meg met Mistress Hopkins outside her house. Mistress Hopkins talked to them about what had happened. Some of the men said they were tired of building ships. Why should they go to Virginia, they said, when they had a good life here? We must go to Virginia, said Admiral Summers. The people there need our help, and we were sent to help them. Sorry. Ah. Stop it. Go if you will, said Robert Waters. Some of us mean to stay. He and seven others stopped work. They went to live on the other side of the island. It doesn't surprise me, said Mistress Hopkins. Robert Waters was always one to make trouble. Anne Hopkins was in the doorway. Is Master Waters gone? she asked. Yes said his mother. And he isn't coming back. And he isn't coming back? So he says, said Mistress Hopkins. Then I can tell, said Anne. I was afraid of him before, but now I can tell. Tell what? asked her mother. He took the lion's head. How do you know? asked Amanda. I saw him go into your house while you were gone, said Anne. And you never saw the lion's head after that. Master Waters was good to us, said Amanda. He helped build our house. I don't believe he would take the door knocker. You don't have to believe me, said Anne, but I know what I saw. Amanda and Jimmy and Meg went home. Do you think Master Waters took the door knocker, asked Amanda. He used to say someone might steal it, said Jimmy. He used to say he wanted to keep it for me. Do you think he has it now? asked Amanda. I don't know, said Jimmy. Chapter 19. No, sorry, chapter 21. Waiting for Jimmy. One by one, the men came back until only Chris Carter and Robert Waters were left. Work went on at the North Harbor. Both ships were finished. And I'm going to break from the reading, boys and girls, to tell you that there really was a Chris Carter and a Robert Waters that stayed behind on the island. That happened in real life. Let's keep reading. Work went on at the North Harbor. Both ships were finished. We may reach Virginia in a week, said the Admiral, but it could be longer. We must carry enough food and water to last six weeks. Men began loading the ship with fresh water, pickled eggs, salt fish, and salt pork. 
word was given to everyone in the village, Be ready to sail on the tenth day of May. What of Master Waters and Master Carter? Someone asked. They chose to stay, said Admiral Summers, so let them stay. Two days before the 10th of May, Amanda and Meg got up in the morning to find Jimmy gone. They were only a little anxious. Sometimes he went to the beach to see the sunrise. Sometimes men took him fishing. But by evening, he had not come home. Amanda went to Governor Gates. My brother is gone, she said. The boy who likes to roam about the island, said the governor. Go home. He may be there now. But Jimmy did not come home that night. The next morning, Amanda and Meg set out looking for him. They looked along the beach and in the woods. This island is too big, said Meg. There are too many places. Back in the village, they went from house to house. Have you seen Jimmy? asked Amanda. Will you help us find him? People were packing their boxes and sea chests and helping load the ships. Only a few left their work to look for Jimmy, and they stopped looking when evening came. But Jimmy is lost, cried Amanda. How can we look in the dark, said one of the men, and Amanda and Meg were soon left alone. They went back to their house. Meg asked, will the ships sail tomorrow? I think so, said Amanda. Even if Jimmy isn't here? He will be here, said Amanda. Go to bed. Aren't you coming? Not yet, said Amanda. I want to stay up with you. They sat in the doorway. Amanda tried to see out into the night. What if Jimmy doesn't come back, asked Meg. Then we'll stay here till we find him. But the ships are going tomorrow. They will go without us. Will they let us stay? If they don't, we can hide, said Amanda. We can hide till the ships are gone. How will we ever get to Virginia, asked Meg. We will think about that later, said Amanda. We can't leave Jimmy, can we? There's a picture of the girls hiding. We're not hiding, but waiting. This is where I ended this morning. Should have kept going because there's another page. No, said Meg. Amanda, do you hear the sound that's like talking? Do you hear a sound that's like talking? It's the wind. It makes that sound in the cedar tree. Amanda stood up. Oh, Maggie, it's so dark out there. If Jimmy did come back, how could he find us? She went into the house and felt on top of the sea chest for their one candle. She found it. Wait here, she said. Their cook fire was out. She went up the path until she saw a few coals still burning in someone else's cook fire. She knelt by the coals and lighted the candle. She went back to Meg. She stood in front of the house and held the candle high. Almost at once, she heard footsteps. The candle shook in her hand. She almost dropped it. Jimmy? It was Jimmy. She could see him against the darkness. Amanda, I got it, he said. What, she answered, she asked. The knock, knock, he said. Chapter 22, The Other Side of the Island. It was the 10th of May. The two ships had sailed. From the deck of the larger ship, Amanda and Jimmy and Meg looked back at the island. It's nearly gone, said Amanda. It looks so little, said Meg. It looks little from here, said Jimmy, but it's a big island. You'd know if you'd been lost there. Tell about being lost, said Meg. I told it already. You told Amanda I went to sleep. Now tell me. So he told his story again. He had gone into the woods to find Robert Waters. I knew there wasn't much time before we sailed, he said. If Master Waters did have my lion's head, I wanted it back. But he, but he had lost his way. When night came, he had to sleep in the woods. 
In the morning I called and called, and they found me, Master Waters and Master Carter. They took me to their camp. I said I wanted the lion's head. Master Waters said he was keeping it so nobody would take it from me. He said we might get back to England one day, and then we could sell it for money. Did you tell him it wasn't gold? asked Amanda. Yes, but he didn't believe me. Master Carter told him to give it back. Master Waters wouldn't, and they started to fight. While they were fighting, I went into the tent and found the knocker. I took it and ran. Once he had thought Master Waters was after him. I hid under a bush, he said. I hid till after dark. Then I came on. I didn't know where I was till I saw the candle out in front of our house. Why didn't you tell us where you were going? asked Amanda. I didn't know it would take so long, he said. You made us all worry, Jimmy. Yet she was proud of him. Whatever he did, it seemed she was proud of him. The two ships were crowded. They were more crowded than the sea adventure had been. But the sea was calm and the voyage was easy. In less than two weeks, they were in sight of land. The ships sailed side by side into the waters of a bay. Captain Newport had, had sailed these waters before. Chesapeake Bay, he said. Amanda saw a rooftop on shore. A flag was flying from it. Is it Jamestown? she asked. No, said the captain. That is the fort on Point Comfort. They stopped at Point Comfort. Two other ships were there. Captain Newport and Admiral Summers began to point and talk together in great excitement. The ships they saw were two that had sailed with the sea adventure. A man rowed out from shore in a canoe. Sailors threw him a rope and pulled him aboard. He was a gray-haired Englishman. Have you come from England? he asked. From Bermuda, answered the Admiral. I am Admiral Summers, and our ship, the Sea Adventure, was wrecked there. The man cried out, This is a great miracle! We thought you were lost! What of the other ships that sailed with us? asked the Admiral. All but one came safely to Virginia. Where are they now? Gone back to England, except for those you see here, and they will leave soon. What of Jamestown? asked Captain Newport. The Englishman shook his head. Ah, there's a sad tale. Amanda was listening. She drew near. There was a war between the English and the Indians, said the man. Our people were ill and starving. It was a terrible winter. Once five hundred of us lived in Jamestown. Now only a handful are left. Some went away into the woods. Some are dead. We hear that more ships are on the way from England. I pray they will come in time to save our poor colony. We are here, said Admiral Summers. Let us go to Jamestown with all speed. Chapter 23 the lion's head. The ship sailed up a river with woods on either side. It was the River James, said Captain Newport. Amanda and Jimmy and Meg were on deck. Jimmy was watching for Indians. Meg was watching for deer. What are you watching for, Amanda? she asked. Amanda hardly heard. She was saying over and over to herself, let father be safe. Let him be well. They came inside of Jamestown. It's on an island, said Master Rolf. Almost an island, said the captain. The town was inside a wall made of tall tree trunks. A few gray rooftops rose above the wall. Captain Newport shouted through a horn, Halloo! Only an echo came back. A party of men landed just down the river from Jamestown. Amanda watched them make their way along the shore. What are they doing? She asked a sailor. They are making sure it is safe for us to land, he answered. Soon the men were, were in the town, looking out over the wall. 
They were making signs to let the captain know there was no danger. The river is deep here, said the captain. We can bring the ships all the way to shore. The ships came up almost under the wall. Admiral Summers and Captain Newport crossed the plank from their ship to the shore. Ladies and gentlemen began to cross after them. Amanda and Jimmy and Meg waited their turn. Someone made way for them, and they walked across the plank. On shore, they followed the others to a gate in the wall. It was open, and they went through. They saw a square of log houses, a church, and a long shed that might have been a storehouse. The roof was off the shed. The church door was broken. There was an open yard in the middle of the town. A few thin, wild-looking men were there. They had gathered about the admiral and the captain. Amanda looked quickly at their faces and turned away. She looked into houses one after another. All were empty. Halfway around the square she went, looking, looking. She pushed open the door of a house and drew back. A man was there. He lay on the floor. His clothes were in rags, and he was so thin the bones of his face stood out. He was changed. He was so terribly changed, yet she knew him. Father, she said. He turned towards her. His eyes were staring, and he said something that sounded like, They've gone away. Father, it's Amanda, she said. Still, his eyes stared. He didn't know her. She wanted to cry out, Look at me! Remember me! Jimmy and Meg were in the doorway. They came slowly inside. Is it Father? whispered Meg. Is it Amanda? asked Jimmy. Yes, but he doesn't. He doesn't. She knelt and tried again. It's Amanda! And Jimmy and Meg. Jimmy came closer. He had taken the lion's head out of his pocket. He was holding it up for Father to see. And Father saw it. He was looking, first at the lion's head, then at their faces. He spoke their names. Amanda, Jimmy, Meg. Amanda dried her eyes on her sleeve. She said to Jimmy and Meg, Go to the admiral. Go to the captain. Ask them to come here. And then you go to the ship. Bring food. Anything you can find. Bring water. They started off. Run, she said. She took father's head in her lap. He reached up a hand to her and she held it. She had thought it might be cold, but it was warm. She was not afraid now. They were here to care for him. She and Jimmy and Meg, and help was on the way. He was looking toward the door. She looked to see what he had seen. Above the door latch was a peg, and Jimmy had hung the knocker there, the lion's head that caught, had caught the light and made a brightness in the room. Oh, do you remember when I, we started the story and I said the author made use of dark and light? He ends it on a light that, and that's the sign of hope. That's a good sign, a brightness in the room where darkness had once been. And now a historical note. As I told you, this was historical fiction. So let's see what part of this story maybe was actually true. <clears throat> on June the 2nd, 1609, the Sea Adventure with eight other ships sailed from Plymouth, England. The small fleet was bound for Virginia, then an English colony in the New World. Two years before, settlers had found the village of Jamestown there. Now many were ill, they faced starvation, and they were at war with the natives. The ships from England were bringing help and supplies. For weeks they sailed together, but on July 23rd, a storm drove them apart. Three days later, the Sea Adventure was wrecked off an island in the Bermudas, about 600 miles from Virginia. 
There were men, women, and children on board. All landed safely. In the nine months they lived there, they built two ships, and in May 1610, they sailed to Virginia. They brought food from the friendly island, salt, fish, and pork, palm cabbage, cactus pears, and the pickled eggs of wild birds. They found Jamestown almost deserted. After the winter of 1609-1610, known as the Starving Time, only a few settlers were left. The colonists from Bermuda fed and cared for them. Before the food was gone, three ships came from England with more supplies and new settlers, and Jamestown was saved. Stories of the sea adventure were published in England. Some of them were read by a man who wrote plays for a London theater, and he wrote a play about a storm at sea and a shipwreck on an enchanted island. The play was The Tempest. The man was William Shakespeare. So William Shakespeare wrote um, a famous play off of this. Okay, and you can read about Clyde Robert Beulah in the end. I'll stop the I'll stop the reading here. All right, boys and girls, what do you think? You pleased with the ending? <laughs>